Hello everybody, my name is Joe Mayab. I'm the principal of the Breathy County Area Technology Center and I'd like to welcome you today. We've got a little PowerPoint presentation and a video that we're recording to send to KVEC to talk a little bit about the house design for this year, uh, the students working on it, some different aspects that they've gone through. I have uh, three of our teachers here with us today. First is uh, Gene Booth, who's our carpentry instructor. Hello, everybody. Kelly Clyburn, who's the electricity instructor. Good afternoon, everybody. And Jerry Smith, who's our business instructor. Hey, people, hope everybody's doing well. So I'm going to turn it over to these guys and let them talk to you a little bit about uh, what we've got going on. Mr. Smith. All right, so as has been the case for the past two school years, uh, we had to take a sum of money, which we started out with $10,000 for the very first tiny house, but our last tiny house did so well when it sold, we started out with $18,890 this time. So we were ecstatic. And we feel like we're putting the money to good use and we're gonna have a, another fantastic tiny house. But we take that money and two teachers and a bunch of eager kids and build a fully functional tiny house. So having all this money has been just great. It's allowed us to kind of stretch our legs and apply a lot of things that we really wanted to with the first and second tiny houses. But you know, you, it, the, one of the challenges with this is staying within the budget. So uh, now Mr. Booth is gonna talk about the design that they came up with this year and um, go from there. Um, this year's design is a whole lot like uh, uh, last year's tiny house design. If you look at the picture, tiny house number two on the slide. Um, but, you know, our first tiny house, tiny house number one, as you see in the upper, uh, as, in the upper picture, um, was a shed frame with a, I'm sorry, was a gable frame with a shed dormer. Uh, but we used a D-log D siding. So we decided to take the best of both of them and uh, pretty much use the same floor pan plan as tiny house number two, uh, but incorporate D-sided logging on it for this year. So. Uh, in this picture, we're putting together uh, the kids, the students are putting on. Uh, I think that they're, um, uh, laying the, the second floor uh, <clears throat> flooring and they're using uh, a tongue and groove pine for that um, so of course Kelly might talk to you a little bit about the electrical and the plumbing which he was mainly responsible for yeah um, going back to this same picture you can see uh, like Gene said, they're putting down that tongue and groove flooring, but right underneath that tongue and groove flooring, those four befores had to be routered. The kids did all that. They routered grooves down them, uh, put their Romex wire in it uh, in order to make light drops. And all this had to be put in um, before he could go on to the next stage of building. So he would get so far along and then we'd have to do our thing and, and hold him up for a little while. Uh, while we got the wires ran. Um, and I'm drawing, thing. I'm circling right here. You can see the wires have been uh, started to be. Yeah. Run. Yeah, that's like, like down there where he circled. Yeah, much of the same thing. We had to drill through the studs, pull the wire through. But if you look just, just under uh, that young, I believe that's Ty with the nail gun. If you look just under his uh, nail gun there, you'll see that big four before. And that was actually the member I was talking about that they had to router and then put the wire down inside of it in order to get the electricity to the lights for the bottom floor. Mr. Smith, um, could you go back to the previous slide? I wanted to talk a little bit about tiny house number two for just a second. Yeah, sure. So if you guys will look at tiny house number two, we had a lot of debate about the color choices and I think it got to a point where we just said, you know, we got to do what, it's already too late, let's just roll with it and see what happens. And we had some positive input about the color and then we had some negative too. 
if you guys would talk a little bit about that and then it ended up bringing more money than we even imagined it could bring so i guess it's just a, a, a matter of opinion and what have you, what's your plans on with the color choices for this year's house well um we started out um uh, if i remember correctly we had decided on like a more of a sunburst kind of a had a little orange in the color and that paint is actually a stain well when we got it back home and opened the cans up it looked more yellow than anything but it's really really good stain and it's four or five hundred dollars worth of stain so we had to use it um and it, it's kind of, I, I kind of think it's one of those things that grow on you. We were all kind of in shock, I think, when we first started using it. But then um, I think Gene had the idea to uh, trim the windows the same color as the roof. And I think it turned out really nice. I mean, it, it kind of grew on us. And obviously, it turned some heads at KVEC. Well, I, I feel like it was kind of a niche thing. You either really, really like it or you don't. And... Uh, Luckily, there was several people out there that really, really liked the paint, so that was a plus. Um, of course, whenever you open up a can of paint, uh, you never really know what it's going to look like until it dries. Um, but it it turned out this, about the same color as it was wet. So, but it it turned out really well, and it sold for a very nice price. And uh, so we lady, found somebody. Oh, go ahead, Jerry. The young lady that purchased it. Uh, said that she fell in love with it when she saw it. She said she knew that was going to be her tiny house. So, One thing that was a big plus, um, you know, we, we decided that uh, when you buy a tiny house, a lot of people, they're looking for more of an interior uh, design than they are maybe an exterior design. And um, <clears throat> if you didn't quite like the color or the outside appearance, Whenever you walked into the tiny house, you, you forgot about it because it was just simply beautiful on the inside with all the wood and the way the countertops were just amazing with Mr. Clyburn. He did a, a process. Uh, what's it called, Mr. Clyburn? It was a uh, Lichtenberg wood burn um, across the countertops. And then the, which if you're not familiar with that, it kind of looks like lightning bolts run across the wood. And then we would uh, fill the lightning bolt bolts in with uh, colored epoxy. I let that dry and then clear coat the whole thing with uh, clear epoxy. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so if you really, if you didn't like the, the outside, like I said, when you walked inside the, the structure, you completely forgot about what it looked like on the outside because the interior was just amazing. And I really, really wish that I would have had some pictures in here from the previous tiny houses to show the, the type of wood. But there's one of just the top, um, This I think it's this top flooring here that we'll see. And if you can imagine that everywhere, it's just really pretty. <coughs> and all of that wood is sourced locally. That's the, the best thing about it. Uh, yeah. it, all, it all comes from the surrounding counties and um, we know a guy that owns a local sawmill and he, he does it for us. So yeah, uh, all that lumber is harvested in Breathitt, Wolf, surrounding counties and processed here locally. A lot of the tiny house, even the windows were built in Bowling Green, Kentucky. So uh, our, our tiny house is, you know, a small percentage of it really is uh, not from Kentucky. And we would like to thank KVEC for uh, having the trailer ready to go and the money to us really early. Made a huge difference because we actually had some uh, pretty good working time uh, in September, you know, to really get started on the flooring and stuff. And, and uh, that was, that was kind of hard to do um, the first time around because it took a while to get the trailer. But they really listened to to us, and and we really appreciate their willingness to help us out with that. And uh, it's and a, just to a, add to what you're saying, Jerry. It's um, as an administrator from coming from an administrator's point, money is really tight right now with budgeting and the way things are going. 
And honestly, before this opportunity came about, I was thinking, you know, how are we even going to fund our shops at all? You know, and then this grant came along and it's really saved the day. So I'd like to personally thank KVEC for what they've done for us. <clears throat> and we already talked about this, that the, the layout was almost identical to Tiny House 2. Uh, without the siding and the colors, I don't think the lay person would, would know the difference, really. And talking again about the colors, Gene, could you tell us what you got in mind for this year's color? Uh, with this year's color, uh, we're going to do a, uh, of course, we're going to do a, a D-log siding like we did in the first year. Uh, and we're going to go with a natural color, which I think will match uh, the roof very well. Our roof is a copper color, uh, metal copper. And it's just beautiful. And with the wood uh, being a natural color, I think that it, it's going to it's going to impress a lot of people. And uh, I guess one of the students, uh, Mr. Clyburn, uh, came. He just he uh, gave us the idea for the copper roof. So Cl Clyburn could uh, tell us in more detail about the roof for this year. Um. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, it's a student that me and Gene both share. Uh, he takes carpentry and electricity um ty addison he came to me one day and he said you know i helped my uncle um build a log cabin and he was talking about he said he said look it up on the internet he said find some log cabins with copper roof and we did and he was right the the two colors uh really complemented each other and uh i talked gene into it and we went for it, so yeah, I, I think it's going to look really great. It already does, but when we get that wood siding on there, I think it's going to look really good. And you can see here, um, here's the trailer, and this was one of the first things the boys did was uh, was put the um, subflooring in. So, Mr. Booth, you may want to talk more about what's going on here. <clears throat> well, in order to uh to maximize the space inside the home, uh, we decided, like we did last year, to incorporate the flooring inside the trailer frame. And uh, so you can see by the picture, uh, the students they're laying insulation in between the, the steel studs or joists, which are actually spaced 16 inches on center, uh, just like you would have in a regular home. And, um, <clears throat> And so as soon as they get fi got finished with that, we started laying the sheeting for the floor or the subfloor and we used Vantec for that, so. Here it looks like, oh, go, go ahead. ahead Jane. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, here we have two students and uh, I believe I could, by the picture, it looks like they're putting in um, maybe a, a king stud or or just support for the header for the fender wall there. Um, they just uh, put up the walls after they've constructed the walls and uh, they're screwing them together and, uh, and uh, plumbing them up, so. And I'm not a uh, construction guy at all, but I know from just the conversations that were had the first and second year that a lot of this stuff, getting it on the trailer, um, there just isn't a lot of gotchas anymore. It, you know, uh, Mr. Booth and Mr. Clyburn, you know, they know the tricks and they're passing those on to the kids. So a lot of this stuff has just been a lot easier, I would think. Is that a fair assessment, guys? Yeah, yeah I'd say so. We've had a lot of, you know, you, it's just like teaching a lesson you reflect back on what you, what you did. And um, we talked about it before we got started, even with some of the electrical stuff. And one challenge with the electrical is of course your panel box is gonna be on one side of the house or the other, but you're still gonna have appliances on the opposite side. You don't have a whole lot of dividing walls. You don't have a whole lot of walls to get those wires over to the other side. So that was one of the things that we did reflect back upon. And uh, we were able to, uh, before we laid that insulation, like you've seen in the previous slide, we were able to run some of those wires through 
uh, and get them over to the other side for items like the hot water heater and some other uh, necessary kitchen outlets, the small appliance outlets and stuff like that, which really saved us a lot of time. Yeah, I, I don't think that you can know to do something like that if you've not done it before. No, know? Uh, even the best carpenter is not used to building a, a house on a trailer, you know, so you, you kind of learn as you go. Well, one, one really good uh, lesson that the students learn is that uh, as how carpenters and electricians and plumbers have to work together in order to build a structure. You know, there's a lot of pre-planning that's involved. And um, so they have to work together so that the project can be complete in a timely manner. And uh, that's one thing that the, the kids really, we really stress with the kids, so. Let's see, in this picture, um, they're using the subfloor of the trailer frame uh, to construct the walls on the left side. Um, and then on the right side of the picture, they're screwing all the walls together uh, on the trailer frame. So this is for the first floor. Let's see. Go ahead, Mr. Carter. I'm sorry. I was just kind of blowing the picture up to get a better idea of what was going on. I think that's mm -hmm. just uh, that left side there. Um, they're working on the pop out. I don't think we've mentioned that yet. The pop out is uh, uh, is a way we we decided to make more room in the bathroom. So all that pop out really does is contain the sink some vanity lights, an exhaust fan. And you can see those guys are, they're kind of up on their ladders there, maybe sitting on that wall there to pop out a little bit, uh, screwing some of those framing members together. Mm -hmm. And shrink my screen back down. And these Ooh. pictures aren't necessarily in order because I pulled them from so many different sources, Facebook, phones, you know, we took some with, traditional cameras. So I apologize if, uh, if this stuff isn't necessarily in the order that it was built. So. I think what they're doing there in that picture, um, of course they're framing some walls up, especially on the right hand side. Um, they're Mr. Booth and some students were mocking up the upstair walls while my guys was pulling the wire through the bottom walls and the plumbing pipes. Uh, all the fresh water, hot and cold lines through the walls. So, so we were kind of split up doing two things at once there, I believe. Mm -hmm. I think you guys have really gotten the hang of, of working together like that. I mean, you always work together well, but you all really know that, okay, I can, you know, Booth can do this while Clyburn does that. And it's not a lot of guessing anymore. It's just kind of like, that's what we're going to do. Yeah, so, yeah we got to know really what to impressive. do until the next one can yeah, it's really impressive to me. It really is. And we've got a little video here. I like this. This is nice. And uh, the you'll see they had no idea Mr. Clyburn was going to film it. <laughs> they were roughing out the windows. And uh, uh, these two guys here are some of the, the leaders. Every year it seems like there's some some leaders uh, that step up and uh, uh, Ty is a senior and, and this guy here, is, they call him Smiley. I don't even know what his real name is. He's a sophomore and has, has been there every step. So yes. what's Smiley's real name? Justin Fletcher. <laughs> Justin, yeah. So he will be, uh, you know, one of the leaders on the, the next tiny house for sure. If, if you look here in this picture on the left, uh, this student, his name's Dylan Terry. He's an excellent student. Uh, I believe he's a junior this year. And, you know, there, it's one thing to study about the tools and, um, and learn about, uh, you know, the, and how to define them and what they're used for. But, you know, the great thing about this project is you incorporate all the tools that we use in carpentry. And uh, the kids really get to know, get a feel of what it's like to be on a job site which is, it's very, it's a very, very valuable lesson for the students, so. And this is what I was talking about. You can really get a feel for, 
imagine when you open the door to the tiny house, you're going to have this kind of uh, tongue and groove wood everywhere. And when the light hits it, it's just, it's beautiful. And especially with the, taking it outside with the windows, uh, we feel like this is one of our biggest strengths uh, with our tiny homes is the, the, just the sheer amount of beautiful woodwork that goes in place. Yeah. And here you can see they're putting on the sheeting. And, uh, oh, Mr. Clyburn, this would be a good opportunity to really talk about the pre-plumbing and, and electrical because you can see it very well here. Yeah. Um, let me get my – I've kind of blew it up here where I can see it a little better uh, in order to talk about it. Um, across the top there, you can see a blue and a red pipe, and this is called the – PEX tubing. PEX is a really great choice and we're really lucky to have it in this modern age because um, PEX is more flexible. You know those holes we drilled them through there we didn't really uh, if you'd use PVC they'd have to be almost perfectly in line but uh, you can just get them close and it'll pull on through there. Um, a lot of times you don't have to use a, an elbow or a 90 connector. It'll actually allow for enough bend to get to where you're going, unlike PVC or copper. And another cool feature about PEX that I've learned about in recent years is the colder it gets, the tougher that plastic gets. And if it freezes solid, it's more likely to bust, uh, uh, to bust one of the brass fittings rather than that plastic itself. And of course, it's color coded. You can just walk in there and say, well, okay, this is a cold line because it's blue. This is a hot water line because it's red. And, uh, you know, we don't really have a plumbing uh, program at all, you know, so uh, I, I think my guys usually do it, but Mr. Booth's kids, they get in on it too. And one of the great things about, you know, working at a school like this is I, I really wasn't that familiar with PEX getting started. Um, and they have other fittings called Shark Bites. The Shark Bites cost about $10 a piece, which runs into a lot of money. So we started getting the, uh, they call them PEX fittings that have like clamp rings. Of course, you have to buy a set of crimps that cost about $80, which is a big investment. But once we've done that, uh, we did that last year, and we just used those crimps over again this year. Saved us a lot of money, a lot of time, and uh, it's just a great learning opportunity, not just for the kids, but for myself as well, because I'd never done it before. Um, and then you also, you've got the wiring there. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Clobber. No, that's okay. There we go. That's okay. Uh, you can see the big black wire coming up out of the floor. That's what I was talking about earlier where we went through the actual floor and then turned back up. That got us from one side to the other. And then the rest of those wires are just going around to like the kitchen, uh, going to the bathroom, just various appliances. Uh, and, and we were working on this while Mr. Booth was busy mocking up the upstairs with his kids. That's just some more pictures of the cutting out the uh, the rough cuts for the windows, and uh, <clears throat> this is just another shot of from up on the second story. And uh, there's one that actually shows what tight tolerances there is when we pulled this thing out of the shop to get it onto our lot. And there was a previous slide that talked about, we actually had cleared out this back lot because it's level. And the, the first tiny house we built, um, it was out in our parking lot, which is really sloped. And uh, that was a, a crazy experience when it come time to remove the jacks and, and get that <laughs> thing rolling. Um, it, uh, that's just one of those lessons we learned that you, you don't think about, but uh, this flat lot has been a big asset, um, as best I can tell. Like a lot of the, the <clears throat> press of getting everything level has been a lot easier in the back lot. So. Yeah, I have to give uh, Mr. Mayeb uh, credit for that. 
it, it was his idea to, to go out there and it turned out to save us a lot of trouble. So I thank you, Mr. Nayab. And I, I thought he was crazy, honestly. I, I didn't think you could put it where it was, but I mean, it made total sense. It's so much better. Uh, they can actually, they have more room that you don't have to worry about cars coming in and uh, hitting the kids or whatever. So uh, that was that was a really good idea. Uh, and I, I'll tell you something else a lot of people don't think about. That location was really good because you're going out there a lot of times in temperatures that a lot of kids, we've got some really great kids, let me tell you. They'll go out there, it's cold, the wind's blowing. But that location, the school building itself, and that bank knocked a lot of wind off of us. So it, it actually made the working conditions better. And uh, uh, yeah, I knew what I was way. doing, Jerry. <laughs> I know. I, I, know. <laughs> I know. I I should know better uh, by now, not to doubt you. I'll be honest with you. I was kind of hesitant about uh, putting it out there at first, but it it turned out to be a great idea. So, yeah, there's actually a little storage room right out beside there, uh, and it it's a great location to stick all of our tools. And Mr. May have got us some really nice toolboxes this year uh, with uh, casters on them, and so now we can pull all of our tools out there and keep them organized. And and, uh, and that's one of those things that you really don't know until you've done it a few times how much time it wastes having to take tools you know, all the way back to the shop and then back out and back to the shop. So having that little storage building and them, them tool chests was, that was just a fantastic addition to what, what they're trying to do. Uh, and I can't stress this enough. They amaze me with the amount of interruptions that we have just as the normal part of the school day and people changing classes and stuff, how they go yeah. out there and get this done it's it's uh it never never ceases to amaze me and um, I, I wouldn't just tell them that if i didn't believe it well thank you mr smith um in this picture like uh mr clavern said earlier we do a we mock up everything inside um and that way we'll have everything pre-built or prefabricated and in that way we don't have to spend as much time outside without the structure being under roof and um so as you can see, we've already got the walls um, in the picture to the left constructed for the second floor. And we even go as far as building all the rafters inside on top of the, the second floor structure before we bring them inside the shop, before we bring them out. And that way the kids get a good, really good idea of, um, of how to build a roof and um, any mistakes that they make, we can correct before we even go outside to uh, place the walls on top of the, of, the, of the building. But as you can see in the picture, we have uh, the walls already framed and we're getting ready to lift those walls up and to put them into place. And uh, then on the picture to the right, they've already brung the front walls up and uh, they're fastening them down, fastening them down to the, to the second floor. So it's great for the kids to learn this. It's just fantastic, so. Let's see this picture here. You can see the, the back corner of my truck. I uh, believe the guys had just just hooked it up to my truck, and you can see how how big this is. You know, this is coming out of Mr. Booth's shop. Um, very little tolerance. Yeah, very just, little. <laughs> just perfect, really. It's, it's coming. Really, it kind of reminds me of the top fit the first tiny house we built going to Pikeville when we went under that bridge. Went under that bridge, <laughs> yes, yes. I think that scared all of us. Uh, any Those of us that was watching, I, I, I think Gene and Shorty were actually had a big conversation going on and went right on through it, but <laughs> I remember me and Joe was like, oh my gosh, look at this bridge. <laughs> but uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but you can see a lot, those are a lot of our guys. You got Ty with the Nike hoodie on here, and there's Nick. Uh, they work on it a lot. Greg, he's done quite a bit. And then there's Jerry back there in the back. 
and uh, some of the other guys here, they're uh, they're kind of hit and miss. But the two right there in the front, Ty and Ty and Nick, they've probably done most of the work to it. Pretty good guys, and and, and Ty, I kind of have to brag on him. He's kind of a loose cannon at times, you know, just his personality. But um, last year he was he was learning. He was kind of rough with things and I've noticed he has been a whole lot more gentle and a little with a little more finesse this year than last year so uh, the project's good for them they learn and they learn hey some things you have to do a specific way and you can't rush through it so and this day was particularly cold I remember the day they drug it out yeah. and you can see everybody's bundled up but um, most of them that that really go out there don't say much about it they uh this you know, they just they just go. No, they're they're begging us to come out and work on it a lot of days. You know, like if it's just drizzling rain a little bit, they're like, "Ah, oh, come on, let's go on out and work on it." And we're like, "No, nah, I don't know, guys. You get out there and slip and fall on those scaffolds or something that you can see in the next picture there." Um, but you know, they're always willing to go work on it. And they really uh, they love doing scaffolding. They think it's really cool, which it is. They you like know. putting it up. Yeah, yeah. They're just like. And, they, they I wouldn't guess, have to experience that otherwise. If, if well, they they're, you know, they are, they are still kids and they're still little kids at heart, you know, and that's like monkey bars or something for them, I guess, you know, getting to climb around <laughs> on. But this next picture here is, you know, it's good too because it it shows it shows. Uh, I wish we had a shot of the copper roof, but I don't think we do. But it shows the pop out and everything I was talking about earlier. Oh, look at this oh. guy. Oh, uh, that's how, how'd that get in there? I don't know. It's a good looking <laughs> fellow there. Look at that. He's his, saying copper, copper. His zoo dog and everything. Yeah. But, you know, uh, then the, this thing happened and well, everything's been really strange for what, about a month now. <laughs> and, yeah. You know, so. We're, we're, you know, pretty sad that we're not going to be able to finish the tiny house as planned. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about it a lot. And uh, the kids, especially the seniors, you know, they took it pretty hard. But, but yeah. at the end of the day, we all know that we're doing what we're supposed to do by social distancing and, and moving the school uh, to home for until we get a handle on this. But um, we, we really were super excited about, getting back in here and finish it up when we can and it, you know realistically i'd say it'll be next year but who knows um and then here is the, the major budget purchases obviously we've spent quite a bit more on you know the small hardware and stuff like that but this was the the big purchases we've made so far um the structural lumber the heat pump uh the windows and doors and like Mr. Clyburn said, uh, the windows and doors here and all of this D-log siding and interior lumber can take, you know, so uh, that's really cool. I know the, I was going to say this a while ago, but the, the kids went home two or three days before we did. And um, the kids did get to put the roof on, which was great. Um, me and me and Mr. Booth, we went out and stuck the windows in, and you know, and got it ready for hibernation until we can resume. So, yeah, that's why we don't have any pictures of the roof because it was a frenzy. We knew it was coming, so uh, they they hurried up and got that on as quickly and as safely as possible. You know, and one other thing, guys, is I'd like to say how proud I am of you three for doing what you do for our students and giving them the opportunity to do these things. And like we've talked in the past, when the kids get to come down to the technical school, that's the highlight of their day. And it's to uh, to people like you guys who who make that happen for them and give them the opportunity. And I'm just super proud of what you guys are doing. You know, and this virus stuff is bad, but look at the things that we're learning how to do. Like, for example, this Zoom meeting we're doing right now, I don't think any of us had any prior experience with things like this. So 
you know, we're making, making do and taking advantage of our opportunities. And I just want to thank you guys for everything that you're doing. We appreciate that. And we yeah. thank you for your support and your flexibility with this kind of thing, because uh, with projects like this tiny house, it's different than coming up with uh, just a lesson plan that you know is going to last a day or two. And sometimes these guys will get in there and they'll have a plan, but they'll have to shift because they'll try something out and it, it just needs to be refined. And, you know, you, you give us the flexibility to, to adapt without having to worry about, you know, uh, that wasn't exactly what you told me you were going to do and not every administrator would, would necessarily do that. So. Yeah. I, I, I like to say that, uh, Mr. Mayab, <clears throat> he gives us, uh, he believes in us and he puts his faith in us. Um, and, uh, and I really appreciate that. And I know Mr. Clyburn does and yeah. we've got a fantastic principal, Mr. Mayab. So, Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you guys and what you do. Well, you know, if Joe makes it possible. I mean, it comes right down to it. I've heard other principals talk. Well, it, it just takes away time from this or takes away time from that. And I guess in some instances it may, but you really got to look at the big picture of what these kids are learning. I mean, they're building a house. They built every aspect of it. And, Joe could just as easily be one of those uh, principals that pulls the plug on it, but he don't. He allows us to do it, and, and you know we have to thank him. We have to thank KVEC for just for the opportunity because it's teaching the kids a lot. Yeah, and one one of the biggest things I I think we get out of it is it gives these kids a sense of pride. You know, when they see that thing pull out going to Pikeville they're really proud of that and they can look at their friends and say, you know, I, I did this, look what I did, mm -hmm. you know, not mm -hmm. everybody doesn't play sports and aren't, doesn't excel at sports. And, you know, I'm a big, huge sports fan as you guys are too. And, you know, so it gives these kind of kids something to be proud of and say, you know, look what I can do. Look what we did at our school. And we do tours of this thing when it's done and, and take our, non tiny house students through it and uh you wouldn't believe the chatter that you hear for days after they they see it and a lot of them will say oh man i, I want to get a tiny house like that that that's beautiful i want to live in that that's you know that's nicer than what i live in so um, and, uh, you know <clears throat> and, uh, it's just a good community building uh tool and the the excitement and the enthusiasm it extends on out into the community too and Everybody around Breathitt County talks about it. Wolf County. I mean, you wouldn't believe the the focus that gets put on our school just because of the tiny house. And I'd really like to thank KVAC too because it's it's done not just the great things for our school, but for our, our whole community. So, thank you, KVAC. Well, I think we're gonna wrap it up now, but. Uh, this virtual meeting has been been pretty cool. Uh, like Mr. Mab said, uh, one positive thing is KVEC always lets us do stuff we've never done before, and this is just another example. I didn't even know what Zoom was, to be honest. So uh, thank you, KVEC, and uh, hopefully we can meet again soon, and everybody will be happy and healthy and show off our tiny house. Thank you, guys. See you. See you. See you, guys. See you, guys.